Hello, 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 this is Tony Mike Gremlin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And as I was streaming the craziness that is the, uh, what is that? What's her name? What's her name? Gwyneth Paltrow. The Gwyneth Paltrow ski accident extravaganza. <laughs> With Chief Spread Eagle and the whole cast of characters. There was something even crazier going on in uh, Judge Manning's room. It was namely TPOs. Everybody told me about it. Thank you, Mikhail, for sending it all to me. Other people send it to me. It's eight hours of pure bliss. We're not doing eight hours tonight. We're not doing eight hours. I took a chunk, it, and it requires some editing. It's good stuff. Let's get it started, shall we? In opposition, Anita Dick is an opponent. Waves in opposition. Holden Hiscock is also an opponent. Waves in op waves in opposition. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. And Demarcus Rose. I'm here, Your Honor. Yes, you still wanting to go forward, Ms. Wright? Yes, um, Your Honor, however, um, this, this really is a waste of my time because we <laughs> both live in the same apartments and I already got legitimized, so I'm not willing to... You, you, she can put this in order, but this is a waste of my time for being at court. Like, because this... Yeah, I couldn't even get to the hearings first. There was the, I cut a lot of it, but there, there was some cat hurting I couldn't even ignore. This is really not needed. We live in the same apartments, and you we have a. You think that it's needed, so it's not a waste of her time. What? Well, well, she can. I mean, this is a waste of my time because I have a doctor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm wasting your time. But what are you saying? Because she wants a hearing to get a TPO. It, and it's fine. I'm okay, not. Then, I'm, because, Mr. Rose, I'll tell you what. Why don't you place your email uh, chat, and we'll go ahead and give you one. Uh, uh, that's fine. I, I mean, I, I have a doctor's appointment. That's fine. Place your email chat, because God knows I don't want to waste any of your time. You said place my email in the chat. That's exactly what I said. All right. Or do you know what you Miss Wright? You got, your, you got your email in there? I thought I did. Because that's why I got when well, I they served him. Uh, Did you place your email in the chat here? I'm doing it now. Debbie! That's right. You placed your email in the chat. Yes, Your Honor. All right, let's see. You got it in there, Mr. Rolston? Yes, ma'am. I just placed it. All right. Uh, if you put it in there, then you can go ahead and leave the meeting. Ms. Uh, right, raise your right hand. Okay. You confirm everything in about, uh, your testimony is truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. All right, everything you petition is still true and correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can place your hand down. You still want this TPO for 12 months? Yes, ma'am. All right. I don't know that I see Mr. Wilson's email. So if you have it, do you mind placing that in the chat along with yours? Um, I placed mine. Mine is. And I don't want you to say it out loud. Do you know his? Um, I can probably find it for you. Okay. If you don't mind, you can place it in the chat or email it to Miss Fruit. Yeah. Your Honor, I placed mine in the chat. It's the Black Cartel. The Black Cartel. Yeah, Black Cartel. <laughs> The black cartel is even better than than the email address. Make it make sense. <laughs> Nothing says granted TPO against somebody like is someone more than the, my email is the black cartel. <laughs> I love right, it. Miss Wright, we'll send you a copy of the order. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll send you a copy too. I hated to waste your time, Mr. Morrison. I'm sorry. Okay. Kirby Smith, the <laughs> cradle, Miss Calhoun. Okay, uh, take care of that TPO. I have a witness. Where's your witness? Um, Nina Serrano. She should be in the in the call. Hold on. 
does she need the Spanish interpreter? No. Okay. No, I'm just... Okay, I just want to make sure. What does Nina know specifically firsthand? Um, she's been there while me and Mr. Credo oh, have okay, had to do. You say she's been there and has firsthand knowledge of things that have happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Whitworth, you got any witnesses besides your client? That, that's it, Your Honor. And I'm representing Ms. Calhoun. Ms. Calhoun, yeah, besides your client, Ms. Calhoun. That's correct. All right. <clears throat> I, I give that woman credit. That, that's exactly what the judge is worried about. Is this a pile of hearsay? And and she knew the answer. She knew the right answer to say to the judge. Sorry, I called. All right, I need Calvin Cradle. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Calvin Cradle. Yes. You got any witnesses beside yourself? Oh, um, no. All right. All right, you and Ms. Calvin, raise your right hands. Y'all swear a firm testimony about to give the truth, told truth, or the truth? Yes. It sure All does. Right. All right, Mr. Cradle, you need to tell me why you're seeking a domestic violence order against Ms. Calhoun. Start from the most recent event, work backwards. And I'm sure that you're not a lawyer. And Mr. Whitworth's on here. He's going to object. When he objects, you stop talking. When I start talking, you stop talking. Okay? okay. Start from the most recent event. you got to be specific. you got to give me a date. If you don't know the date, you at least say two weeks ago. If you say in February, you got to tell me what year. This is not a good thing. She threatened me Tuesday. I don't know what that is. You got to be specific. All right. Go ahead. Um, in February of this she sure year, does. Uh, I had just got home from being out of town, and we had got into like a argument over some things that happened between us, and she just texted me one night and said she was outside. And like, I was asking her, why was she outside of my house? Like, I just moved in here, like not that long ago from that date. And she was saying she wanted to talk. We was gonna talk about the kids. And I kept telling her go home. She said she wasn't going anywhere. So I let her in thinking we could talk. And long story short, we got to talking. And then I had to ask her to leave because she kept getting loud. And she said she wasn't going nowhere, she wouldn't leave. So that's when I had called the police. And uh, while I'm on the phone with the, uh, um, the dispatch or whatever you call it, um, they were telling me, uh, basically just to stay like a couple feet away from her. And as I'm on the phone with them, she's throwing, she's throwing stuff. She threw her phone at my head. And then when um, she got by the uh, front door, she decided to tip over my TV that I just bought and it broke. And then she ran out the door. And pretty much after that, the cops were already there. And I just told them to let her go. Um, this one is a classic case of being represented versus not being represented. I think this guy could have probably made a good claim for a TPO, but but the attorney comes in and crushes him, and and and, and rightfully so. Because um, I didn't want to see her, you know, get locked up. That's still the mother of my kids. But um, basically, that was the most recent thing that happened. Happy birthday. Between us, since then, we haven't, like, seen each other or anything. Happy birthday. So she yelled at you. Kalina's agility partner. Head and knocked your television up. Yes. I miss anything? Um, no. All right. Mr. Whitworth, you have any questions? Uh, just, just a couple, Your Honor. Mr. Cradle, can you hear me? Yes. You uh said you made a statement to the police that day when they arrived, correct? Yes. And in that statement, <laughs> according to the police report, you stated that she was exiting the apartment and she Personal unintentionally used the TV to catch her balance and it tipped over. Do you remember telling the cop that? More like the paltry yeah, trial. I told the cop that after I told him that she pushed it over. Okay. Because I said I don't want to see her get locked up. And then you stated to the police 
that she accidentally knocked over the TV and exited the apartment. That's what the statement you made to the police, correct? Happy birthday, Marty. That's Marty what I I never wrote a statement. Well, that's what the police report sta stated. And the police officer, because you stated that she did not intentionally damage the TV, there was no arrest. Do you recall that? Um, I told them that it was an accident after I told them that she took it over because the officer said it didn't look like an accident. So, so you came and got a TPO and you stated under oath that she knocked the TV over to the family advocate, correct? Say that again. You stated to the family advocate when you got the TB TPO that she pushed the TV over. That's what you have in your petition for your TPO, correct? Um, I guess, yeah. So which, which, who were you lying to? Were you lying to the police officer or were you lying to the intake officer for the TPO? I just told you, I said I told the police that because I didn't want her to get locked up. And the police told me, they said, if this isn't an accident, she's going to jail tonight. Okay, so, so, you, so you lied to the police? Um, that's what you want to call it, yeah. Okay, no further questions, Your Honor. All right. Is that it, Mr. Cradle? Um, yeah. Stop swinging in your chair. Is that it? I like that attorney. That was straight business. He didn't. He didn't uh, waste time with it. He just. Uh, that was the point he was going to make. He nailed it immediately, with efficiency, and moved on. That that's a confident guy. Who knows what he's doing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything, Mr. Whitworth? Your Honor, we'll just ask to dismiss his TPO petition at this time. I don't think it meets the legal threshold on statutory guidelines at all. Um, and he's impeached himself on the stand. He clearly has misrepresented facts yep. to law enforcement, either to this court or law yep. enforcement, whichever fact pattern the court believes. So I, I think uh, he's failed to meet the burden of, of proof on his TPO today. All right. You want to respond to that, Mr. Credo? I have more. I have more than enough evidence to prove anything as far as that. <laughs> but if you want to say that, uh, he has more than enough evidence to prove anything. Yeah, I just want you to bear that in mind. Actually, no, you know what? No, I, don't, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> On second thought, I think I'm done. That first statement was so good, I'm going to roll with it. Okay. I'll grant your motion for uh, judgment because uh, and I'll deny it. You didn't present enough case to get me the threshold to get this extended. Why don't you place your email in the chat, y'all, and I'll leave. Good to see you, Mr. Whitworth. Thank you both. So he came over, bamming at the door, kicking at the door. I called the police. Um, he was making threats. And okay, sorry, I I I edited this. Thing. That was a big L. Mark that down as a big L for that guy. By the way, I do think she came over and broke his TV, and I do think she he could have gotten TPO. But he said he lied to the cops. We testified that he lied to the cops on the stand. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to argue it. And and the attorney just mowed him down without trying. This is a new one. And I'm end up like my sister. She's deceased. I did a lot out here because it involved a minor and, and photos and stuff. Took all that stuff out. So you, you'll get a flavor from what she says and he says right here. So boyfriend shot it 12 times. Um, the operator was hearing him study banging at the door and making tell the threats. Tell me what the operator said. Just tell me what happened. Okay. He was study banging at the door and making threats and what saying how, saying he, he was going to shoot up the house. And I'm going to end up like my sister, my deceased sister. All right. Anything else for her? No, ma'am, not at this time. All right, sir, do you have any relevant questions, Mr. Smith, to ask her? You take yourself off mute, sir. Do I have any relevant questions? Uh -huh, to ask her. I mean, um, I really just want to know, like, because I don't know anything about this abuse thing that she's saying, like. <laughs> okay, so you really... heard what you had to say. Now's the time. For you to you have any questions for her for instance like your question would be what is your name and then she answers it she she's just dying for him to dispute it do you dispute this ultimately he does but it is so awkward uh, to this guy's credit he does admit he needs an attorney along the path do you have any questions for her yes i do so when i just want to know like when did this abuse take place 
Like I heard her say <laughs> the it, Sunday it, that uh, I sent you the picture and text you about right, that. but you you want to lead with I didn't do that. That that's what you some form of I didn't. There was no abuse. She's making this up. That's what you want to lead with. Not when did it take place. That the 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 premise of that question is that it did take place. <sighs> it's a big gap but, in between. We're not going to argue. Ask another question, Mr. Smith. She said the Sunday she sent you the picture. What's your next question? Why didn't you inform me too? I mean, you informed, you informed me with a picture, and then I told you that they play like kids. You know what I mean? And then why didn't you tell me that, you know, they he had to go to the hot pillar, all this? I I never knew all that. Why didn't you tell me you took him to the doctor? Because at that point in time, I was upset and angry. My concern was the care of my child. And he was being feared for telling. Next question. Why why you why you didn't let me know what happened the last time when they left here? Um, when they left here, they was. Hey, I'm, I'm not sure. Ask her question. Why didn't you let him know what happened? Answer the question. Um, because we was right outside of his home, and he actually came outside his home and got inside of his car and left when the incident and everything was going on with the police and the crime scene there. Right. Can I next answer question. that, or do do I need to say another can. question? You need another question. What's your next question? You can tell me your story after you finish asking her question. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, there's an ounce of self. Can I answer that? No, you can't answer that. You're supposedly examining her, but I give him two points. He was aware that that might be a possibility, so he asked the judge. <laughs> she says, "Yeah, you got to ask her the question." Any more questions for her? Nah, that's it. All right, Ms. Jones, you got any questions for him? Um. Maybe after he say his point, um, I don't. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. I'll hear from you. Okay, so which I want to know, like, because I don't know really hardly nothing about this. This is going a joke. On. This today, right? Today is a joke. <laughs> I, today is an absolute joke. I got all excited because everybody except for one person had their name other than something other than iPhone. And now today, everybody here <laughs> on serious allegations of family violence and or stalking. And y'all act like you ain't got a clue what's happening. I, I, I cannot believe this. She made allegations against you that you used <laughs> corporal, not just corporal punishment, because corporal punishment is legal, but you used such punishment that it left bruises on this child. It seems mm -hmm. like to me, if I were you, I would want to tell my side of the story to the right. woman in the black robe that's making the decision here. So there you go. Go. I'll hear awesome. from you. <laughs> okay. Well, can I start off with the uh the punishment part? I make my kids stand in the corner for timeout and I have I have them write. I got paper where they write their name or they write what they done and they have to write their sight words. So True. let's start with that. Okay, now let's start back with um the let's first start time. by responding. Respond to the allegations she made. That's what I just did. I just told you I don't do no corporate punishment. I don't oh. even whoop them at all. I, I make them specific liars. allegations on specific dates, sir. Okay. So I guess I, I want to hear your story, sir. But you got she made allegations on specific dates and what these what the ch children said. So okay, okay. So I guess it was the February the third, the first weekend. <laughs> I know first, it's so like good. The first, it's so the good. Third and the fifth. So I guess it was the first uh, weekend that I get them. That's when she said I did all that, which and I didn't. She sent the picture and she didn't communicate with me after I had told her. I was like, I don't know what happened in that picture. It could have been they fight, they play fight a lot. They touch each other a lot. I don't know what happened. He's on a roll. Um, she, they came back over here and then they left. I got video of them leaving comfortably. I, they taking popsicles out the house. So there's no way that they was crying or doing anything when they left here. Um, I do have the video. I don't have the video of them outside my house because <laughs> she didn't bring them to my house or Thank nowhere you. where I can see them by my house. Now, my wife got in the car and went to the store and came back and that's how I know that she had brought the police to my house. And not once did I walk around there. Th that and the fact that there were squad cars out there, probably with sirens on. 
but he should he should be fine because they took popsicles out the house. So that, I mean that's a rock solid defense. Because I didn't know what was going on, so I just left it alone. You know what I mean? But she had already been asking for my door number and stuff like that. So um, that's when I knew something was gonna happen. Uh, now back in 2018, I placed a uh, I placed the a order out so I can get legitimized against her because she kept keeping them away or whatever. But before I placed the order, let's go back to the allegation she was saying about me being a violent person and I do all this stuff when I provide the home for her to stay in and those oh. kids and I did not put no knife or nothing. Thank you, Miss Nobody Maria. nothing. I only restrained her and I walked out the door and got in my car and I left. So she calls the police and the police says, all I did all these things, put all these feelings on me because I was not there. But this is my home. Put all these feelings on? <laughs> I'm really restrained her by the neck. Okay. Okay. This, this call just, it, it, it keeps going. And yes, indeed. Don't worry. It gets worse. I could have came right back to my home, but it was a heated moment. <laughs> and I did not want it to go farther than what it did. So it wasn't no, 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 no weapons involved, but she said it was. And then they put it on my record. And then I had to go through probation and all that. It's been seven <laughs> years. I have been off probation. I right, paid me, it all. I've been doing it, everything I'm supposed to do. Now, prior to Miss Ben Miss Walker, I never been in any trouble. Any trouble. And after Miss Walker, I never been in any trouble. Only trouble I ever had is with Ben Sean Walker. Only problems I ever have is with Van Shine. Okay, Walker. Mr. Smith, okay. so we done got off on, I don't, we on 285, and we have circled it and missed our ex. <laughs> I know, but she has a lawyer. I need to get me one. The lawyer keeping her on track. So I need right. a lawyer to keep me on track. And if I knew I was coming to court to do all this, I would have a lawyer. I just got the paper on Sunday. Uh, thank and you. you. And you ready? Huh? Miss Jones, do you have questions for him? Yes. Um, and pictures, are you going to show some of these pictures? We can. I would have to do share my screen. Oh. Let me hear from Mr. Smith. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Okay, so I guess back in 2016 um, is when I had my second son, which is uh, Tavion. Uh, I'm just saying. Yeah, if I, was I don't need a... background. <laughs> huh? I need you to respond to the allegations that she's made. We don't need backstory. No. The bruises on the child's leg. That's what I need from you. Ma'am, I don't know nothing about those bruises. She could have did that in the time when they when they got home and then tried to blame it on me. I don't know. That's all. Wrong again. Uh, like he he's he's flirting with the idea of denial, but she's looking for him to say, "I didn't do it." Then she's like, okay, we have a factual dispute. She's not coaching, but she's like, do you have a response? Did you do that or not? And then he dances around it, which makes you think he kind of did. I'm saying, I don't, when they leave my house, she's they saying is that, okay. that she's, what about the child saying that you did it? It's because she coaches him on certain things. I mean, he, uh, he, he ain't the brightest child, you know, oh. um, but she she can brainwash him but my oldest son that's it's awkward. hard for her kind of to brainwash him so that's all i got on that has defax reached out to you no i went to her place they told me a court order so that that was friday and then that that was friday and then on that 18th of february uh, I'm in March. Thank you. Of March, I got served. No, it was the 19th. It was Sunday, but they say the paperwork said the 18th. I got served, but I got served on a Sunday, which was the 19th of March. Okay. Did a defect worker reach out to you? No. Y'all have another case pending right now. I don't know. You telling me? There, there is a, a modification being submitted under the, the in regards to the parenting plan, but other than that, no. Who is that assigned to? Um, it hasn't been assigned just yet. 
So it has been filed yet? It has been filed yeah. yet? Yeah. When does somebody plan on filing it? Right after this hearing. Um, we were just going to attach the, like, the TPOs and other things to it as well. We can't get it resolved off this first hearing. <laughs> no. Believe it or not, I can't even figure out about some of you're saying whatever's even happening. Cause what's going? Um, I believe it at this point, Your Honor, we're just looking for the TPO to be granted. Um, there is extreme family violence between the two, and they do share the children. Um, the child, he is seven. He does suffer from a learning disability, but I think it'd be, I mean, I'm not an expert to say that it'd be hard to manipulate him to say anything, but right now there are bruises on the child. Um, he stated maybe. he got a whooping. I'm not sure how you can get a bruise on the inside of your leg without a belt or some type of swapping of the child. Um, well, I have some suggestions, but I'd like to keep my channel. I guess that regardless of which way the facts go, there is family violence um, and a TPO is definitely necessary um, until it gets sorted out in some other type of way. Well, I mean, one, there needs to be more investigation into this. So mm -hmm. here's what I'll do is I'll, ex I'm going to, when can you plan on filing it? When do you plan on filing the modification? Hopefully soon. We were working that out as far as attorneys and, and clients. This is so frustrating. Uh, I, I had the same thought. It, I, it, that doesn't make it right. I, it just means she thinks like me. I don't know if that's good or bad. But I'm like, <sighs> I'm leaning towards that you should grant this thing. But I'm not sure. And it's too convenient. And, and she seems manipulative. So I'm not sure. So she wants to get uh, a guardian involved. And, and fees and which I think is a good like idea. Um, so are you asking that Mr. Smith not have any contact with the children at all? Or are you asking that he have like visits with say you know, his mom? Is his um, she's asking for no contact, no contact as it stands. What? At all? Right. That's crazy. Now, if if we, we got to put it to where it is uh, visitation with supervision, I mean, we might can meet in the middle there, depending oh on how Smith, uh, So who does your client, Mr. Smith, is, do you, is your mom around? No, my baby just walked down the steps. Yeah. Your mom. And their kids. No. Nah. Yeah, my mom is around. Yeah, she's alive. I, All right, does she live near He you? very Yes, she does. Uh, may well have done it, but close. there are- She lived down, like, down. She lived in the same apartment complex as I Extremely plausible. Do. Okay. Alternative so explanation. At the time that you had visits, if you, could your mother kind of be the supervisor and the child's the children stay with them until y'all can get into <laughs> the modification case? Yeah, sure. All right, that's what we do. Now the thing is, is it is overnight visits. Um, are they expected to stay? Grandma, at night? I mean, as long as they stay with grandma, does, does your mom not want to see the kids overnight, Mr. Smith? We love my kids. That's gonna work. I love this part. We love my kids. She loves them. There's no problem. What's wrong Just with his mother, Miss Walker? Everything. Man, his mother has, has have, have had plenty falling outs. The kids has been over there. They feel unsafe. Okay, you and his mom have had plenty of falling outs. All right. And I even cleaned that up. We all knew that, but I just like this. This, this just this just pushes uh, Judge Manning over the edge. I don't blame her one bit. <laughs> You'll see. At the grandma, how she has witnessed the way that they that, that he treats the seven year old. The ten year old is fine. The seven year old, he's abused mentally and physically. My baby is terrified. He Who's is got money? For, who's got money for a guardian that line? Somebody's paying for a guardian. Who's got it? How much is it? $12,000. You have a problem with every family member, everybody. Man, you can the wife, kids speak, man. I went through this. I don't want to, I know. I'm not about to talk to some kids. Miss Jones, is your... I mean, the, the, the modification is going to request an emergency. But it's not right? yet, and I want to know what's going on. It hasn't yet, but it, it will be. Um, well, I mean, I know you're saying it will, but it could go on and 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 on. And that's not what I wanted to do. Let me see if I can get a guardian. Hold on a second. 
We I had paid. court once. I'm she she not it was trying to pay for a guardian. I pay child support. I pay child support already. I think she did. You mute me, Judge. I sure did. Stop talking, Judge. Can I say one thing? Nope. Your Honor, may I? No, you may not. Y'all both working? <laughs> yes. Okay. Here you go. There's a guardian that's gonna come on. She's gonna talk to you, and she y'all be able to either split the fee. It's probably gonna be about twenty five hundred dollars retainer. Y'all can split it halfway. And, that, yeah. and what that would do is that guardian would carry over into the modification. So that if anything else happened, then she could report to what she found in the modification. Excuse me. I don't have that. Welcome. And and I just don't understand why is this why is it such here's a what I don't here's why here's what we don't because you're talking well, in circles. Don't want to know what, listen to me. I want to know what's happening with this child. And a guardian now bottom is an investigative arm. So y'all can split it. Tell me which one you want to do. You want to split it? Or are you going to pay it all, Miss Walker, and let it get reapportioned in the modification? Sir, this is only going to help you or hurt you in the modification. If you're not doing anything wrong, then it will help you. So which do you want? Somebody That's exactly where I'm at. Again, I'm leaning towards uh I'm leaning towards siding with her, but not strongly. I'm like 55-45. And that's exactly, and, and we're having a hearing, and you've got a hundred other people on the call, and she's like, nah, I want a GAL talking to these people closer and getting, and, and having somebody represent this child's interest and report back to me. I absolutely love it. That's, the, I think that's the right call. She's going to pay it because she ain't working for free. Can, can I say something? In the alternative, if they aren't able to pay, is it possible to just to come to a conclusion where... It is still supervised visits, but not overnight on the weekend that he they're not, they're not gonna do they're not gonna do that. She hates all his relatives, he hates all her relatives. I mean, and but I never said that. Guard, good. The guard, the but that's guardian. what it's gonna say. I can already tell you, Mr. Smith, 17,000 of these TPOs, and I can tell you exactly how this goes. She hates everybody that's related to you, and every everybody she named, you're gonna say you hate them. I have pla I have seen this Judge. movie. Judge, she has you know what? Judge. I'm appointing a guardian. <laughs> She's gonna get on I love. I have seen this movie. I, I use that one myself, but it, it's it, it fits perfectly right there. Her relatives have a baby by my brother and my. I'm gonna appoint a guardian. She's gonna be on here in a few minutes. She's gonna get your information. I don't, she can keep them. Okay. Uh, yeah. wow, Mr. Smith. That's man, awesome. Much man, I had to go through too much with this man. Awesome. Not even the money part. Just. I can I, All right, here's Miss Green, Miss Brittany Green. I'm going to play. She, Mr. Smith is just, you know, he's just like, what the hell? I don't care anymore. Mr. Smith, I'm going to make Miss Green a co host. That's not what I'm saying, ma'am. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just frustrated. Don't stop talking over me right now. So, uh, Miss Jones is the uh, attorney for mom. Two two things there that I that make me kind of sympathetic to this guy. One is he is pay, paying child support. The other is when she tells him to shut up, he does. And I guess three things because the other thing he said, well, I'm frustrated because because what he just said was stupid and, and that's a way to back out of it. But that's a straight up way to say, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. And I have some respect for that. It doesn't mean he's right, but it makes him more sympathetic. I'm not sure if he's right or not. This is on the child. Talk around in circles. I'm not getting good enough information. I need some help, and I need somebody to uh, talk about this child. Tell me what's going on, Miss Green. Your co-host. You can take uh, Miss Jones and Bashan Walker into it. You may move them into a breakout room, and you, or I tell you what, and you can talk to and you can talk to Mr. Smith. Okay. So you do it whichever way you want to do it. I'll do it separate. Okay, but Miss Jones uh, represents Miss Walker. Okay. All right, let's do this. Up. We got to take care of this one with the uh, with the um, interpreter, Ramirez and Tobar. Yes, it's me, Rocio Ramirez. Ramirez, Ramirez and Tobar. Yeah, it's, it's me, Rocio Ramirez. Sir Lewis. Yes, Judge, I am here, and oh, there's Arturo Garcia. Arturo Garcia. 
and he is should still be on the Zoom session as well. Okay. Um, now, Judge, I, hold on a second. This attorney is also smooth and sidesteps a lot of issues and helps the court and everyone involved here. I've already sworn Ms. Bloody in, but I'm gonna, um, she's going to swear them in. Ms. Ramirez, Mr. Garcia, raise your right hand. Señora Ramirez, Señor Garcia, levanten su mano derecha. Do you swear for him testimony about to give? Is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Juran que la declaración que van a hacer aquí será la verdad, toda la verdad, y nada más que la verdad. Sí, lo juramos. Yes, lo juramos. We, we swear. Yes, we okay. swear. All right. So, Ms. Ramirez, put your hand down. Señora yes, Ramirez. Yes, sir. Hold on. Yes, sir, Ms. Lewis. Uh, and I'm sorry to interrupt the court. Judge, I am looking at a bond order that does exactly what you are being asked to do in the TPO issued by, it looks like, Keith Morrow. Are you interested in knowing about that? Señor, su señoría, yo veo aquí una um, orden de la fianza que hace exactamente lo que a usted se le está pidiendo hacer. Alguien que firmó es Chris Moore o algo. ¿Usted sabe algo al respecto de esto? You want the case number on it, Judge? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. ¿Cuál Two, es el número? Three. I'm sorry, Madam Interpreter. I'm going to read the whole number out, Madam Interpreter, and then I'll repeat any portion that you want me to. It is 23CR. 000991A is an apple. And I also think Maria has taught me enough, Judge, I can share it on my screen if you want me to. Um, el número de la causa es, y voy a, y voy a decirlo toda, señora intérprete, hasta el final, si usted quiere que repita algo. 213R000991A. Y creo que puedo compartir esto en la pantalla porque María me ha enseñado suficiente para hacerlo. So this bond order, it makes sure he paid a thousand dollar good bond. Mm -hmm. Entonces, él pagó una fianza de mil dólares. It says no further sí. contact with uh, Ms. Ramirez. Y dice que no puede tener ningún contacto futuro con la señorita Ramirez. It looks like there's the initials of three children. Al parecer están las iniciales, iniciales de tres menores. Sí. And stay away from Hemingway yes. Lane. Que se mantenga alejado de Hemingway Lane. But then it says third party transfer children, which is kind of contradictory. <laughs> Entonces dice que la tercera parte transporte a los niños, lo cual es contradictorio. So ask her, I mean, this says he's not supposed to see the kids, but then it says they can talk to a third party to, if the kids are AGJ, I mean, AGM, JGM, and DGM. ¿Eso está correcto? Sí. Yes. So is it her understanding he's supposed to see the children or not see the children? Entonces, por lo que usted sabe, ¿él se supone que debe ver a los niños o no se supone que deba ver a los niños? Sí, yo pedí que él viera a los niños, solo conmigo que no tuviera como de vernos, pero sí, con los niños sí que tuviera este contacto con ellos. Uh, yes, I asked for him to be able to see the children, not me. Um, I don't want to us to see each other but with the children yes i want him to ca have contact with them so with so, that uh, so mr with lewis that, the attorney is anna wright i saw i saw senor um, lewis la abogada is anna wright si sí, yo lo vi yo lo vi what we can do if you want to mr lewis is we can put this in place to follow along with that and then allow the judge to tear that to Mm -hmm. Thank you for changes to this. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly where I was coming. To. I'm sorry, Madam Interpreter. Go ahead and then I'll say what I got to say. <laughs> so that I was actually, it was my intention had I come on here in a better, uh, with my tie on and everything, I would have actually asked the court to dismiss this action because it is Constitution applies to foreign nationals. what is already ordered um, that he is complying with. Yeah. So it's assigned to Judge Rock. So... Why don't we put this in place 
and put on there that Judge Roth can make any changes or because there's the, the plea and arraignments on May 8th that will get in front of Judge Roth. And, and I'm going to be over there. It kind of, it's got, I guess it's like somebody that goofy mm -hmm. wears a, mm -hmm. a belt and suspenders. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is I she guess. okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> Me parece bien, sí. Is Ms. Ramirez okay with that? Señora Ramirez, ¿le parece esto bien entonces a usted? No le oigo. Sí, está. Can't hear. I couldn't hear. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. We'll do that, Mr. Lewis. Well, um, so <coughs> Mr. Arturo, what we'll do is we'll put it in place and Judge Roth, if, you know, comes out to it, makes any changes or whatever, they can make changes there. And we'll put in here that um, same thing. We'll have that mirror that bond order. There's third party third party contact as far as the children. Bueno, señor Arturo. Entonces, eso se va a hacer. Ms. Ramirez, okay? Le parece bien esto, señora Ramirez? Sí, está bien. Okay. Yes, that Mr. is Lewis, fine. Your client's cool with that? Yeah, I, I think he is, Judge. I, I, I guess my question is, we gonna we gonna have a, a bond order and a TPO on the same subject matter. Yeah, but it, but like I said, when you go back in front of, uh, <laughs> I'll let Roth make any changes that they want to. Talk oh, so you, so, so you're writing it on there that you, in essence, yeah. <laughs> I got Roth you. Can, I, Roth can make changes to it if he wants to. Got it, got it. That's good enough for me, Judge. Okay. It's done, says. All right. Once they place their emails in the chat, they can leave. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. I think we can find your email. For saving us all. Um, Your Honor, I, I placed the one from Ms. Ramirez on the no chat because right. she didn't know how to enter the chat. But for Mr. Arturo, uh, I Mr. did Arturo, that. Can you place yeah. your email in the chat? Just Senor, tell them yeah. Arturo, eh, Señor Arturo García Tobar, ¿puede usted poner su correo electrónico en el chat, ¿sabe cómo hacerlo? Uh, no, la, no, ya lo puse. ¿Ah, ya lo puso? ¿Ya lo puso? Ajá. Ok, he, uh, Mr. Arturo has already placed it on okay. the chat. Oh, okay. yeah, I see it. AG. Okay. And, um, we can email it to you too, Creo. I mean, Mr. Thank Lewis, thank y'all. Y'all stay healthy and safe. Have a good weekend. Bueno, I have que estén bien. Why I leave, Judge. What's that? I have the greatest amount of respect for you, and you have proven again today why I am not qualified to do that job. Now, may I be excused. Absolutely. <laughs> Tengo el mayor de los respetos para usted, y usted me mostró porque no estoy calificado para hacer su trabajo. All right, y'all can leave. Have a good one, Mr. Lewis. Que right. tengan buen yes, día. Señor thank Lewis. you, Ms. Claudia. It's, you're welcome, Yaron. I may have still another case or yeah. not, Yaron. Dorfman and uh, Mr. Bennett. Yes, ma'am. You need the interpreter, yes or no? No, no, ma'am. Are y'all sure? Because I'm going to release her. Yes. I'm 100% sure. Okay. All right. Okay, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you. My pleasure. Uh -huh. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Dorfman. Ask your questions. All right. So I was just is um, so Mr. Salamanca is still under oath, correct? No, ma'am. I'm I'm objecting to Ms. Dorfman asking questions of my client. He is not under subpoena. There has been no subpoena filed. Return. He doesn't have to be subpoena. He's been served. He's the adverse he's, party. He's the adverse party. What is the authority? And and forgive my ignorance here. What's the authority re that, that requires or allows a attorney for another party to call an adverse party as a witness without having been subpoenaed? If he every single, case, every he single, single civil, civil case in, in the state of Georgia, it's 24-6-611. When I was on the bench, I probably had this happen at least a thousand times. I've never had respondents counsel not understand that this was allowed. And I yeah. know Judge Manning and as well as all the other judges that he... Uh, it's dumb of him to not know this. It, it, it's not the worst, but he does admit it. He's like, I, I, I don't do this. I'm like, yeah, okay, then, then don't be so... You can't say that and then be so confident about what you're saying. Overall, I think he's a, he's decent, but he he's he, he's messed up in this particular case. What they're fighting about is he's saying that that his client needs to be subpoenaed. He's a party opponent. He doesn't need to be subpoenaed. I mean, in Illinois, you have to have what's called a, a 237 notice on him, but it's the same procedure. Whatever. It, it, that's a different 
it's a different number, but it's we have the same thing. You you can call. I I open most cases by calling the adverse witness. About ninety percent of the time, I call I call the I call the opposing party as an adverse witness is my first witness. Your TPOs around Georgia are all very familiar with twenty four six six eleven. I can I'm, call the adverse party and I can cross examine him. I'm, what I'm I'm about it? I apologize for throwing a wrench into the process, Judge, but but you know I feel like this is this is necessary to preserve this. Twenty four six six eleven is regarding the order of presentation of witnesses. Look at C. Subsection C does say you can use leading questions on direct examination when you call an adverse party, party. If a when a party calls a hostile witness an adverse party or a witness it's identified an adverse as party. Adverse party, but. The, Judge has already basically told you she's ruling against you, and then opposing counsel is a former judge apparently, and and uh, she she isn't too nice about it, but <laughs> but she's she seems confident in her position too. You might want to back down on this one, especially once you see what's coming up. Does that the subpoena and you can rule? Call the adverse party in civil cases. Okay, he can still assert his Fifth Amendment right, but I can take a negative inference from his assertion of his right. She is allowed to ask questions. Mr. Perez, Understood. please take yourself off mute. I'm sure Ms. Dorfman will make, will make it very slow and painful. This does get ugly, for real. So it really does. Like, not even funny ugly, ugly, just ugly. All right. Mr. Salamanca, can you state your full name again for the record? David Santiago Salamanca Perez. All right. And how old are you? 25. Okay. And you do speak English well, correct? You actually taught English in Colombia. I need a interpreter. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. You have got to be kidding me. What? What I'm is gonna... going on today? Okay. This is this is a joke. This is a joke. Today is an absolute joke. Your Honor, he speaks English. He taught English. Are you speaking? He said English? he needs an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself sometimes. I need an interpreter? <laughs> he lays the accent on thick for it, too. It's so good. I, look at, I just where I pause it the way she is look, back in the chair. I don't blame her. I don't blame her one bit. She just dismissed the interpreter. She's got a call full of people. <laughs> it's too good. It's a joke. Mr. Bennett, you just apologize. You just allowed the interpreter to be um, excused. This well, is ridiculous. Well, my this is my joke. understanding is that he does understand English. And that's he does understand English. What, all I can go off is what Mr. Perez. Do you or do you not need an interpreter right now? Yes or no? Yes, Your Honor. My God. Miss Free, could you please get her back on here? Because he does need the interpreter. Your Honor. <laughs> I, I agree, Miss Dorfman. Today, it's like I'm in this, some sort of, it's like these 17,000 of these have not occurred before me prior to today. And Mr. Perez knows good and well. He has been here illegally for many years, and he speaks English. He taught English. This she is got ridiculous. that in. I'm not sure my client's immigration status should be considered, Your Honor. Damn no, it is, right, it is definitely Jones. relevant. All right, hold on. While y'all, while we're trying to get back in touch with her, Miss Jones, have you guys spoken with uh, Miss Green? Have you yeah. spoken, Miss Green? You spoke with everybody? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Are you satisfied? Are people cooperating with you? The only issue that both sides brought to me uh, was payment. I wasn't sure if that's going to be split 50-50. They both said they didn't have money to pay, but I explained what my retainer was and that, you know, you're appointing me to do an investigation. She is going to make it so down and dirty. You guys can split it halfway and you've got to decide. She doesn't work for free. But I can tell you right now, when you file a modification, they're going to want to be a guardian. I'm not going to make her do a lot of stuff in here except for talk to the kid and find out about the bruises. And I'll give y'all a conti continuation date. And this is going to make your other part easier. You got friends, you got family, call and find it. And y'all can split it down the middle because if this is important to you, you will make it work because I bet both of y'all stop and get dessert at restaurants, uh, probably go out and eat a couple times, stop and buy coffee. Uh, let's see, you treat yourself somehow. 
I understand. And you can forego that for your children. I've dealt with other guardians that take income into consideration. Um, and sometimes it's not always paid by the parties when it's paid by the court. I mean, if they can't pay her. I don't, I don't want her to be put in a position to where she can't be paid. Y'all can't find money to pay her. I mean, we no, are willing to have an amount of money. One at a time, Ms. Walker. Make, can you make it something bare bones, Ms. Green? Mm -hmm. I like, can do, if I'm just speaking with the, like the child, I can just speak with the child. Um, How much you need? Where is where's the child located? What part of town? Atlanta. Atlanta? What part of Atlanta? Um, southeast. Okay. I could I could probably do for fifteen hundred. Or it may make it cheaper if you take the child to meet her at her office. The more y'all mm -hmm. make her travel, the more it is. Fifteen hundred dollars. Y'all can split it both ways. Send me an order. And we will send you the pleadings if you just place your email in the chat. What, how far out do you need another hearing date? 60 days? Um, <clears throat> let's, let me look at my calendar. I think next week is spring break, so I could probably meet with the child at that point. Um, and so if that is the case, I can get him on the first week in April. And then after that, whenever you're ready, Your Honor. You need a date in May? Um, yeah, May should be fine, yes. Ms. Free, you want to give a date in May? You're on May 10th at uh, 2 o'clock. May 10th. You said May 10th? 5th. 5th. Yeah. May 5th at 2 p.m. Ms. Jones? It yes. is. Uh, I'm going to have to speak with Attorney Coleman. He's going to have to he'll take it because I, I have another court date. Well, then. somebody going to be here then. Right. It's all, um, gonna, it's all it's going to do, okay? Until then, Ms. Green, Ms. Walker, what is wrong with Mr. Smith having uh, Zoom visits with the children? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with Zoom visit. Okay, good. Y'all both set up your little Zoom account. Both parties can record it. Ms. Green, you can keep put that in your own. Both parties can record the meetings. Now, Ms. Walker, that doesn't mean you sit there and you listen. You start it with Zoom so he can talk to him on Zoom. Record it. Mr. Smith, you can record it too because it could protect you just as much as it could hurt you. It could protect you, Ms. Walker, just as much as it could hurt you. But at least this guardian yeah. knows. So don't waste the guardian's time. Sending her all these videos with kids just you know blah 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 blah. <laughs> it better be something important for her for her to hear. This child is what's most important to me. I get it, I get it, I get it. But these bruises got on there, we want to find out if it's doctor's notes or whatever. Send it all to her at once. Don't call her. Don't bog her down with all kinds of communication. She can get it over with as quickly as possible. And it's going to help you in your modification case. If not, then you have to start all over. Ms. Green, you got all their information? Yes. Are we doing Zoom calls every other day, 30 minutes, 15 minutes? How would you guys like to do it every other? OK, it's going to be real easy. Ms. Green, you tell them. OK, I will. Ms. Green's going to write that Zoom call. Uh, Mr. Smith, what time do you work? Um, From 6.30 to 5. OK. Ms. Walker, are the children available 7 o'clock at night? Yes, yeah, seven o'clock time. All right, Miss Green's gonna put a schedule down, and when y'all have to, if you don't have a Zoom account, you better y'all both of you better get a free one. And I can send the Zoom link that way. I can set up the recording. Sure. And Mr. Smith, you need to place your email in the chat if you have. It. Yes, I did. We're gonna send y'all the reset notice. Thank you, Miss Green. We'll send you copies of the pleadings, and uh, Miss Jones, everything. You can get Miss Green's number, and we and just send me the order, Miss Green, and we'll be glad. We'll send you the reset notice. Thank yes. y'all. We'll see y'all on May. Thank yeah. you, Your Honor. Uh -huh. All right. Gosh, Miss Claudia, I'm sorry, but all of a sudden he needs an interpreter. <laughs> no, you're already you've been previously sworn. Mr. Perez, take yourself yes. off mute. Ms. Dorfman, go with your next question. Okay. Go ahead and get to the relevant stuff. Okay. Um, Mr. Salamanca, how long have you been in the United States? Señor Salamanca, ¿cuánto tiempo usted ha estado en los Estados Unidos? Objeción. I didn't hear. The interpreter, okay, the, the interpreter could not hear. There was an objection. I was waiting for the ruling. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You objected to relevance. And, you, and Your Honor, I will say, 
irrelevant. Okay. Mr. Bennett, can we, let me just ask normal questions. And then if he doesn't understand one of my questions, ask for the interpreter, because right. most of this, I'm sure he understands. Okay, hold on. Okay. Uh -huh. so here's what I got to do for y'all right now. Since we, Usually we do hey, all or nothing left, on interpretation. I got o'clock calendar in, so something to stand by, Ms. Claudia. Yes, Your Honor. When I call your name, say here. If you cannot hear me, it's a you problem. If you are driving, I will kick you out of here. All right, Amanda Pawalski, Jacqueline Sims. I had to leave this in. Amazing Sims. Amazing Sims. Yourself off of you and say here. She should sue her mother. We're here, ma'am. Hold on one second. I'm trying to unmute the channel. Okay, she is amazing. Ms. Chanel Thomas, are you still wanting to go forward? Yes. How many witnesses do you have besides yourself? Just myself. Okay. Ms. Both Ms. Sims, Jacqueline Sims, do you have any witnesses besides yourself? <laughs> yes, I'm here. I'm here. No, no, ma'am, just myself. All right. Ms. Amazing Sims, do you have any witnesses besides yourself? No, ma'am, I'm just my friend. Okay, place yourself back on me. We'll get to you in a second. Courtney Simmons, Miss Dorfman, get to the down and dirty, please. <laughs> All right, Mr. Salamanca, you are in this country illegally, correct? Señor Salamanca, usted está en este país indocumentado, ¿verdad? Objection, Your Honor. What does that have to do with a petition for dating violence? Your Honor, first of all, it shows that he has no respect Emperor for the laws world. of this country. He's living here illegally. Second of all, it plays a very important part in a lot of the abuse that took place between the two parties. Primero que nada, su señoría, esto muestra que no tiene respeto por las leyes de este país, ya que está aquí ilegalmente. Y además, esto tiene mucho que ver con el abuso de que se está denunciando en este caso. Your Honor, may I make a, su a suggestion, please? Su señoría, pues, pudiera yo hacer un, dar una sugerencia, por favor. Okay. The allegations in the petition are what's relevant. My client will deny each of those allegations, and the court may take a negative inference from his invocation of his Fifth Amendment rights here on the record. I'll waive my objection to uh, lack of proper service of subpoena since civil litigation is not my area. I'm a right. subpoena. You don't, there's nothing to waive, sir. He's a party. Understood. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I will I'll forget about it. He, he, he tries to make that argument one more time. <laughs> oh, man, he handles it well. Th th this is also good. That's my suggestion is that we be, he denies those allegations and the court can take a negative inference and, and Ms. Dorfman can meet her burden of proof with that or with witnesses that she calls for her own uh, case. Go ahead, so, Ms. Dorfman. Down and dirty. Please make my day. Go ahead, Ms. Dorfman. Okay. So it, I appreciate that, Mr. Bennett. I, I am required to ask the questions. Not every question is going to be, um, you know, where he would be asserting a right, but I do have to ask the questions. I am going to try to limit the number of incidents that I do question about because his because he is now claiming that he needs an interpreter even though i'm well aware that he doesn't this is going to take longer because of that mr salamanca you were working at rue in february of 2022 when you met emma brothers correct i'll take the piece. Uh, señor um, salamanca usted estaba trabajando en rue en febrero del 2022 cuando usted conoció a emma brothers correcto Okay. Next question. Okay, se está catando a la quinta. Segu siguiente pregunta. And y'all became an official couple in May of 2022? Y ustedes fueron una pareja oficial en mayo del 2022? I'll take the fifth. Fifth Amendment, I got it. Next question. <laughs> okay. And um, the petitioner lives with her parents and her little sister, correct? <laughs> y eh, la persona que está haciendo la demanda vive con los padres y su hermanita más pequeña, ¿verdad? I'll take the fifth. He's taking the fifth of that too. <laughs> and, when, and when her parents left for Africa on a trip, you began to move yourself into Emma's room inside their home, correct? 
y cuando sus padres se mudaron a África, entonces usted empezó a mudarse a la habitación de Emma, de Emma ¿verdad? I'll take the pit. You would sneak in and out of the Are home we, until her father finally caught you leaving one we get to that. and ended your living under their roof, correct? Usted se metía ahí escondidas hasta que una vez el padre se dio cuenta que usted se estaba metiendo escondidas en una mañana y eso eh, ya terminó con el que usted pudiera siguiéndose quedar ahí escondidas. I'll take the pit. You began controlling all of Emma's time, is it that correct? Usted empezó a controlar todo el tiempo de Emma, ¿verdad? ¿Es correcto? I'll take the pit. You would not allow the petitioner to spend any time with anyone other than yourself, correct? Usted evitaba que la denunciante pudiera pasar tiempo con cualquier persona eh, aparte de usted, ¿verdad? I'll take the pit. You would isolate her from the co-workers, her friends, and her family. Is that correct? Usted la aislaba de sus compañeros de trabajo, amigos y familiares, ¿correcto? I'll take the pit. In October of 2022, you punched the petitioner in the jaw during sex. Is that correct? En octubre del 2022, usted le golpeó en la quejada a la denunciante mientras estaban teniendo relaciones sexuales. ¿Correcto? I'll take the pit. And when she started crying that she was upset by your violence, you claimed that you thought she would like it. Is that correct? Y cuando ella comenzó a, a llorar y porque estaba molesta por la violencia, usted pensó que a ella le gustaba, ¿correcto? I'll take the pit. In October of 2022, you also began showing up at the petitioner's job at the Jekyll Brewing Company in Alpharetta, correct? Y usted, eh, Indeed. Se empezó en octubre del 2022 a aparecer en el trabajo de la denunciante en Jekyll Brewing en Alpharetta, correcto? <laughs> I'll take the pit. And you would sit there for hours throughout her entire shift just to monitor her while she was working, correct? Y usted se quedaba allí por horas eh, vigilándole mientras ella estaba en su turno de trabajo, ¿verdad? I'm taking the pit. On October 30th, 2022, you were spying on her through the windows at her job. And when you saw her speaking with a male coworker, You became angry, stormed inside to confront that coworker with a lot of abusive language, correct? Y en oh. el, el 30 de octubre del 2022, usted le empezó a espiar, lo oh. estaba espiando. Yes, sí, en la house. En el trabajo, y cuando ella empezó a hablar con un hombre, ahí usted se enojó y entró bruscamente a su trabajo y le dijo una bola de malas palabras. I'm taking the feet. Just don't call her Yanny. And that, don't do that. Right, you doing that inside her job, that got Emma fired from that job that day, correct? Y al usted hacer eso en el trabajo de Emma, esto hizo que la despidieran ese mismo día a Emma de su trabajo, correcto? I'll take the feet. Because you don't have a car or a legal driver's license, you were making Emma drive you everywhere or you would walk. Is that correct? Porque usted no tiene auto ni licencia para conducir legal en el país. Usted decía que ama, Emma la llevara a todas partes. I'll take the feed. In November of 2022, when petitioner was cooking you a steak dinner, you told her that you'd like to imagine her with other men having sex because, quote unquote, your girl was a whore. I'll take the feed. Y, uh, en noviembre del, eh, del 2022, eh, la denunciante le estaba cocinando un bistec eh, para la cena y le dijo a usted que se imaginaba a ella con otros hombres, ya que ella era una puta. And I'll take the pit. And you continued sneaking into her home, even though the brothers had made it clear you were not welcome there, correct? Y usted se seguía metiendo escondidas a la casa de ella, aunque los hermanos le dijeron a usted que usted no estaba bienvenido ahí, ¿verdad? I'll take the pit. 
in December 2022, Emma found out that she was pregnant with your child and your verbal and psychological abuse grew worse and worse, correct? En diciembre del 2022, Emma se enteró que estaba embarazada con su hijo y el abuso verbal y físico incrementó más y más todo el tiempo. I'll take the fifth. And you told her that you would not tolerate her having that child and that you would not help her if she kept it, correct? Y usted le dijo que no iba a toler tolerar que tuviera a, al, al sí, bebé no, no. y que si lo tenía, usted no la iba a ayudar en nada. I'll take the fifth. And you swore to her, quote unquote, that if she did not get rid of the baby, that you would, correct? Y usted le juró que si ella no se deshacía del bebé, usted lo haría. I'll take the fifth. On December 27th, the petitioner terminated her pregnancy and was in a lot of pain, but you insisted that she drive you to a parking lot for you to sell a camera, correct? I'll y take... el, el 27 de diciembre, um, usted... Eh, Ella estaba, había, ella había tenido el, el, había terminado la, el embarazo es, y estaba con mucho dolor y usted la llevó a un estacionamiento porque quería vender una cámara. I'll take the feet. The two of you, you and the petitioner and the brothers were both very active skydivers, correct? Ustedes dos, tanto como los hermanos, eh, eran unas personas que les gustaba hacer el eh, skydiving, o sea, aventarse de, de los aviones. I take the field. And in late December, you also screamed at her for four hours because she merely followed Sebastian, who was a mutual friend of you both from skydiving on Instagram. Okay. Y el cuatro, uh, en he, diciembre. He understood it. Mr. Perez, do you need the interpreter or not? That's a question for you, Mr. Perez. Got it. You got oh, sorry. The question, Mr. sorry, Your Honor. He, sometimes I need it, sometimes not. Okay, well, so how do we know when you do or you, whether you don't? Because you're <laughs> answering and taking the fifth before Miss Claudia can even do her job. Most of the time I understand. So if Ms. Dorfman asks a question, you need to say, I can answer it, okay? If you yes. need to hurry to interpret it, you need to let her know because you are making this so much harder than it needs to be. I understand, Your Honor. For, for the record, this is the procedure that, uh, that the attorney suggested in the beginning. I understand that. All right, go ahead, Ms. Dorfman. In Air January, get down to it. He's gonna he's gonna take the fifth on everything. So he right. my life. I got it. In January 2023, you were both working together at the Milton restaurant Lagarde, correct? I'll take the fifth. And you started forbidding the petitioner from wearing certain outfits because she looked too attractive and you didn't want other men looking at her, correct? I'll take the fifth. January 30th, 2023, just a few weeks ago. The petitioner turned 21 years old. Do you remember screaming at her that she was worthless and does not deserve anything for her birthday? I'll take the fifth. On February 7th, you woke up very, very angry at petitioner and you told her that you will only stay with her if she stays home from the trip to Florida that her family had planned for that 21st birthday, correct? I'll take the fifth. And when she did not cancel the trip, you blew up at her and began to push her around the, her room, calling her a fucking bitch, correct? I'll take the fifth. Then you told her as an added punishment, she cannot go on the family trip to Italy this coming summer, correct? I'll take the fifth. On February 8th, while you were in the car with Emma, you demanded that she drive you home immediately or you would freak out and hurt her, correct? I'll take the fifth. You began grabbing the steering wheel while she was driving, almost causing Emma to run off the road and crash, correct? I'll take the fifth. You then went ballistic inside her car, kicking very hard the dashboard, breaking the driver's seat, and also breaking the air conditioning vent, correct? I'll take the fifth. Emma let you out at a red light, correct? I'll take the fifth. 
and she reported the incident of domestic violence to Roswell police, correct? I don't think the thief. In late February, you blew up at Emma because she cannot fix your legal status and she refused to marry you, correct? I'll take the fifth. And you made it clear that she made it clear that you need to stay away from her and her family in their home, correct? I'll take the fifth. Her father, Steve Brothers, also made it very clear that you were not welcome in their home or in their neighborhood, correct? I'll take the fifth. But you have no respect for her parents, do you? <laughs> I'll take the fifth. You think that you know what's better for Emma than her own parents do, correct? Interpreter, please. The interpreter needs repetition. I was, I'll ask him, is you think that you know what's better for Emma? Well, the interpreter is cranky. She did not want to partially interpret. I, I don't know why, but she, she made that. She she said that in the beginning when the attorney suggested it, and now, and now she's not happy about it. Emma than her own parents do. ¿Usted considera saber lo que es lo mejor que le conviene a Emma, mejor que los padres de ella? I'll take the fifth. And then, just Are a few, done this, the I mean, this is the last, the last part. Okay. Um, you went to the, but even though they told you you were not welcome, you went to their neighborhood recently while Emma, you knew Emma was at work and you walked down the middle of the street and ran into her younger sister, Sila, correct? I'll take the fifth. You scared Sila by asking her creepy questions, and she told you if you don't leave her alone that she would call the police, correct? I'll take the fifth. So, Mr. Salamanca, this is all just a sampling of the daily physical and psychological abuse that you put the petitioner through. You tried to, not only did you harm her and scare her, but you also tried to control and isolate her, correct? I'll take the fifth. Do you understand that she does not ever want to see you or hear from you again? I'll take the fifth. That's all I have, Your Honor. Mr. Bennett, do you have any questions? Not for Mr. Perez, no ma'am. Ms. Dorfman, anything else? Um, I have Ms. Brothers um, on the screen just to swear that all of that that I asked about was true and correct, and she does want the court to issue this protective order. All right, anything else, Mr. Bennett? Your Honor, I'll call Emma Brothers as the response for that, pursuant to those DGA 24 state six All right, go ahead. Ms. Brothers, you don't need to right, Mr. Perez. You need an interpreter to understand the questions that Mr. Bennett is going to be asking. Yes or no? Talking to you, Mr. Perez, can you hear us? I'm going to assume that's a no, Your Honor, and move on. Well, I'm not going to assume it. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Br Brother, something's happening with your audio. I'm getting some feedback. It's getting too close to a phone just near your computer or something. Electronics, it, it, it's all in the way. So there you go. Go ahead with the questions, Mr. Bennett. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good morning, Ms. Brothers. My name's Eli Bennett. Y'all are maybe sitting too yeah, Ms. Brothers, there's still something. Is there a phone near you? Um, there should be. Hold on one second. Okay. Is that any better? Let's see. Go ahead, Mr. Bennett. Yes, ma'am. My name's Eli Bennett. I represent Mr. Perez. I'm just going to have a couple of questions for you, okay, ma'am? Hey. All right. Buenos dias, now. señorita Brothers. Yo soy Eli Bennett. Yo soy el abogado del señor um, Salamanca Pérez. All right, on or about March 3rd, did you prepare or fill out an ex parte application for a protective order against Mr. Perez? En o por yes. el 3 de marzo, usted solicitó o denunció una orden de alejamiento en contra del señor eh, Pérez, ¿verdad? Sí. Okay, and paragraph four of that order detailed specific act he accused Mr. Perez of, correct? Correct. So uh, in paragraph four, you okay. stated- Hold on, let, let Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Claudia, tell Mr. Yeah. Perez what you asked. Okay. Um, there is still some background, very heavy background noise. 
apparently you have two uh, devices with the audio in your room. So please turn the other one off. So I can hear my voice. It's got to be you, Miss Brother. So if you're sitting close to anybody. No, she's in a private room, Your Honor. I believe Mr. Bennett and the respondent are in the same place. Okay, yeah, they can't yeah, They can't be like near one another. We're not responsible for the feedback, Your Honor. My okay, I'm talking to Miss Brother. She has people on here for support, so I'm telling her if she's close to them, we will get that feedback. She is oh, I'm not anyone, Your Honor. It's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, um, en el párrafo número cuatro de la petición, um, Mr. Eli Bennett, would you please repeat about paragraph four of the order? I can try, yes, ma'am. Paragraph Thank you. four, detail the allegations, the specific allegations that you made under oath against my client, correct? En el párrafo número, párrafo número cuatro, de la solicitud uh, se detallan los alegatos que usted hizo en contra de mi cliente, ¿correcto? Uh, Miss Brothers, I've muted you because of that background noise. Take yourself off mute, answer, and then place yourself back on mute. Yes, that is true. Right, now I'm going to place you back on mute until he finishes, okay? Go ahead, that's the next question, Mr. Bennett. In that paragraph, did you accuse, accuse my client of punching you in the face during sex? En esos alegatos, usted indicó, acusó a mi cliente de haberla golpeado en la cara durante el, cuando estaban teniendo relaciones sexuales, ¿verdad? Yes. Sí. Your Honor, I will state that I was present with Ms. Brothers and was instructed by your staff not to have to detail everything, just to put a little bit in, just to get the protective order. Hey. Yo le it's not indique. a particularized motion like, oh, I'm sorry, it's not a particularized motion like in criminal. It's a, it's a notice pleading. If you still notice, then you're on notice. Sorry, Ms. Brothers. It is. That's why he's pleading the fifth. I indicated to my client that she did not have to have all the details in the order. Next question. At any time in the did you call the police to report any acts of dating or domestic violence against my client? En algún momento usted le habló a la policía para reportar actos de violencia um, en contra de mi cliente? At the end of the relationship, I called police and filled out a police report. Al final de la relación, yo le llamé a la policía para llenar un informe de la policía. At the time that you sought this TPO or after it was filed, did you communicate with my client? Durante el tiempo en que se hizo la solicitud de alejamiento o de there are also de pending charges. se comunicó usted con mi cliente. We communicated up until I was admitted into a um, emotional support rehabilitation center for the domestic abuse, um, which was before he was the protective order. Go ahead. Yep. So that was prior to March 3rd? Fue antes del 3 de marzo, entonces. The last time we communicated, I believe, was March 3rd. La última vez que nos, nos comunicamos fue el 3 de marzo. Ella indicó que es que la habían, se había metido a un lugar para apoyo psicológico por abuso. Okay. Do you, do you remember telling my client via direct messages that you told law enforcement or the court system that he had never been violent with you before? Recuerda haberle dicho durante mensajes directos con mi cliente que usted le había indicado a la policía que él nunca había sido violento con usted. Um, I do not recall. No recuerdo. Would it refresh your recollection if I showed you a copy of the of the messages regarding that statement? Le Absolutely. Le, traería, le recordaría si yo le muestro mensajes, una copia de estos de lo que usted le dijo a él directamente en mensajes sobre la no. policía. Absolutamente. Your Honor, I'm going to object. I've been the attorney of record for petitioner since March 6 in this case, and I have never been sent anything or shared anything. Thank you. Um, and I do not have access with my client right now. She is in a secure facility. So I'm going to eh, object. 
Yo voy a objecionar su señoría. Yo he sido representa, yo he estado representando a mi cliente desde el 6 de marzo y nunca se me han enviado o compartido ningún tipo de este tipo de comunicación uh, uh, para mí, para yo estar um, consciente de esto. Y mi cliente ahora se encuentra en una instalación eh, eh, con seguridad. Your Honor, my response is I'm, I'm just attempting to refresh your recollection. It's not an evidentiary <laughs> exhibit or any, anything like that. Nada más le dije esto para recordarle su, la memoria a ella para refrescar su memoria. No es para entrar, en, no es para presentarlo como parte de las pruebas. Okay, is this relevant? Tiene relevancia esto? I, I would submit it is because it's directly impeaching of well, not really her testimony, I guess her testimony through her lawyer asking my client questions that he was violent. Eh, sí tiene relevancia, su señoría, porque es para impugnar. Bueno, no impugnar, pero sí para mostrar que ella no había demostrado que él era violento, no lo había and dicho. In, and in fact, it's them discussing this very matter that's pending before this court at the time that she was allegedly, you know, making these claims in court with her lawyer. Y, era, eh, y tienen que ver con respecto a las discusiones de los alegatos que estaba haciendo durante el tiempo en que se interpuso esta demanda eh, en que estaba hablando con su abogada. Responda la pregunta. Um, I would be willing to tell the defendant anything he wanted to hear to protect my safety. And if that includes telling him I did not report his violence, I absolutely would have said so. Yo le diría al acusado cualquier cosa para protegerme de sus actos de violencia. Y si esto quisiera decir mentira al respecto de no haber hablado con lo, la policía sobre esos actos, claro que lo haría. So that makes sense. The answer to my question then is yes. You did tell him he was never violent with you and you stated that, correct? Entonces, la respuesta es que sí, entiendo lo que usted está diciendo, pero está diciendo que sí, que no hubieron, uh, que usted le dijo a él que no había habido actos de violencia. Asked and answered, Your Honor. He said yes. No, she didn't. Uh, he does a really nice job. I think her counsel does a really nice job throughout this, but there she's just, whatever, I just disagree on that fine point. Um, th this attorney does a nice job uh, setting up the whole getting the judge to go along with answering the question because for impeachment purposes, which I think is proper, but he was ready for this. He's got a, he's got a client who's accused of bad, bad stuff. He doesn't have a lot of, a lot of stuff, but what he does have is her saying, oh, he was never violent, you know, in a police report. So uh, th that's the, those are the best facts he has and he, and he was ready to get him in. Yes, his brothers. I still do not recall. I'm just saying it's possible. I do too. Question. You said, all he wanted, you, you said something, you told him anything he'd want to hear. Is that a yes? If that's what you told him. Yes, your honor. All right, next question. Still is hello, que quería oír. Sí. One moment, moment, your honor. Okay. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. Anything yeah. else, Ms. Dorfman? No, Ms. Brothers, is everything uh, that you put in your petition true and correct? Yes. Yes. Are you in fear for your safety and the members of your family's safety from Mr. Salamanca Perez? Absolutely, yes. Absolutamente, sí. Are you asking the court to extend the 12, the protective order for 12 months? Le está pidiendo a la señora juez que extienda la orden por 12 meses, la orden de alejamiento. Yes. Sí. That's all I have, Your Honor. Eso es right. todo Anything lo else, Mr. Bennett? Algo no, Your Honor, just argument briefly. No, no argument. argumento breve. No, is it my turn? I mean, I can, I'll argue very briefly, Your Honor, that um, this was a very controlling textbook relationship of, uh, you know, of psychological family, I mean, dating violence abuse. He literally would not let her talk to other people, didn't want her to spend, to go on a vacation with her family. He controlled all her actions, got her fired from her job because he would watch her. Um, and if she 
God forbid, spoke with any male coworker. He would blow up at her. He did punch her in the jaw. He did force her to terminate her pregnancy. And he did um, grab the steering wheel, causing her to almost crash. She is very fearful for her safety. And again, I'm sure she did tell him whatever he wanted to hear before she checked herself into this um, inpatient facility. So we would ask the court to extend the 12 month protective order. So, señoría, esta es una, uh, este es un caso eh, en que es típico de controlar a la persona de manera física y psicológica en que hubo violencia, en que no dejaba que ella eh, fuera a diferentes lugares. Actually, yes, aislar, in my opinion. Aislarla, no podía ir de vacaciones con su familia. Él, eh, de hecho, la golpeó en la, en la quijada, um, hizo que ella terminara su embarazo, o sea, que a, abortara, um, y también tomó el volante, eh, en peligro de que ella pudiera haber tenido um, un, una situación de, de, de un accidente. Además, ella teme por su seguridad. Um, okay, that's, that's all I can. All right, and also, Your Honor, he, he you know, Mr. Salamanca Perez, the respondent had every opportunity to explain his side of the story, but he chose to instead plead the fifth on every single question asked. El señor Salamanca pudo haber explicado su versión de los hechos, pero él se negó um, acatándose a la quinta enmienda constitucional en todo. Por lo tanto, pedimos. That's a dicey argument. You're not supposed to be using it against him. Although you can take the inference, so you can, I guess you can make that argument. But it, it it's something that uh, would naturally make most attorneys and judges like you know step back que se efectúe se extienda la orden de alejam de alejamiento por 12 meses yes. Mr. Elliot I mean excuse me Mr. Bennett Your Honor the I'll really just be brief the the discrepancy between what's in the petition and what we heard today through Ms. Brothers counsel is striking um we have an allegation of a threat of violence no actual violence um you know grabbing a steering wheel which I don't believe was even directly asked about on on cross or direct or whatever it was of, of Mr. Perez. Um, it's a very unusual process to have a witness vouch for somebody else's cross examination and have that be sufficient to grant a TPO. It's an interesting strategy. Um, it, all I would submit is that yes, of course, the court is uh, within its discretion to take a negative inference. But given the start, the beginning of, of Ms. Dorfman's questions that focused on completely unrelated, irrelevant issues. I think that um, you know it, that should also be taken into account when the when the court decides what the strength of that inference should be. It you know it, having what? Ms. Brothers not testify directly to the uh, you know allegations and 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 in an affirmative way and actually provide evidence. You know there's no pictures of injuries. There's no police report or time that Mr. Perez Salamanca was arrested or charged with any of these heinous crimes he's been accused of. You have a lot of uh, allegations of a controlling relationship and that her, her parents didn't approve of Mr. Perez. But, you know, everything my understanding of this relationship is that they were two teenagers essentially deeply in love. It became a toxic relationship. I, I don't think he kidnapped her or, 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 you know, made her terrified of him. It doesn't appear that was the case. I mean, everything I have is, is to the exact contrary of that. And that's not what the TPO system is for, is to uh, assist the breakup. And that's what I believe is happening here, Your Honor. So I would ask you to dismiss this. Brevemente, su señoría, eh, me parece que existen bastantes discrepancias entre la solicitud de la denuncia y los actos de, de violencia que se alegan que supuestamente sucedieron, como el haber tomado del volante. Eh, eh, estas preguntas se pudieron haber hecho en contrainterrogatoria eh, durante el proceso, sin embargo, eh, En todas las preguntas que se hicieron, eh, habían asuntos. Usted puede tomarlo esto como una deducción eh, en contra. Eh, sin embargo, eh, como dijo la, la señorita Brothers, cuando se le hicieron las preguntas directamente de su abogada eh, con respecto a los alegatos, eh, 
eh, no se respondieron uh, realmente directamente ante estos, ya que no hay fotografías, no hay informe de la policía que se le hubiera arrestado eh, directamente con respecto a los alegatos de que se le acustan aquí. Sí, tal vez um, se habló sobre las cosas relativas a una relación de control, pero son dos adolescentes que estaban enamorados. Eh, él en ningún momento la raptó, se la llevó o cometió actos de terror en contra de ella. And Your Honor, I must just respond briefly that that opposing counsel's argument is extremely concerning. Um, he had he only chose to ask petitioner two questions. He could have cross examined her for hours if he chose to do so, but he chose to only ask her two because he knows she's telling the truth. And this is exactly the case why we have TPOs in this country. Y esto es realmente alarmante que el abogado de la defensa únicamente le hizo dos preguntas a mi cliente. Dos preguntas porque sabe que ella está diciendo la verdad. Y esta es la razón por la cual en este país tenemos órdenes de alejamiento en protección de las personas. And I'm putting this in place for 12 months. Both of you, both lawyers, just place your email in the chat. I'm oh, sorry, Ms. Dorfman, you mind doing this order? Because Ms. Free is, I don't even know where Ms. She's, look at her, she's working. I think she's working the window and everything. Um, uh, but you mind email us a copy of that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Your Honor. You said email us, email us a copy of the order. A copy of the 12 month order? Yeah, we'll grant the order for 12 months. If you just send us, a, if you just email us, if you just prepare the order. Okay, I'm assuming that you are ordering respondent to undergo FIP. Well, I don't think that, this is in Dayton, and that's been qualified Dayton. Yeah, they that's actually do under the law of Georgia. Just, they just add that this last time. So, because before it would not. Hold on, I'll just look for what it's worth, he's already going through counseling. Okay. Do for what it's the, worth, uh, do you need the dating balance uh, order in Word? que tiene que ir a consejería él si es lo que quieren saber y además que no están casados, están saliendo, eh, pero se va a emitir una orden de 12 meses de alejamiento. That's fine, Your Honor. I, I'll send, um, you want me to send Ms. Free a copy of the 12-month dating violence order? Yeah, do, you, do you need it in Word so that you can fill it out? Uh, no, I can, I've got one. You've got one, the updated yes. one in Word? Yeah. All right, I'll send it to Ms. Free. Thank you. I'll sign it. So, uh, Mr. Bennett, can you put your email in the chat or in um, Yes, ma'am. La abogada Dorfan. La abogada okay. Dorfan lo va a redactar, le va a enviar copia a su abogado el señor Bennett. Eh, la juez lo va a firmar. All right. All right. May Ms. we be Claudia. excused, Your Honor? Yes, Ms. Dorfan. Ms. Claudia, where is Mr. Perez? Señor Mr. Perez. Señor Perez. If you violate this order, si usted quebranta esta orden judicial, you can be charged with aggravated stalking. Se le puede usted acusar de acecho con agravantes. Which carries a sentence of up to 10 years. La, este cargo, esta falta, lleva una sentencia de hasta 10 años. If you also violate this, Miss Brothers is allowed to file a contempt. Si usted quebranta esto, la señorita Brothers puede emitir una demanda en su contra eh, por desacato a la ley. She can file a contempt and I can put you into jail up to 20 days and give you a thousand dollar fine. Se, y con esa orden de desacato se le pondría a, 20 días, um, hasta 20 días en la cárcel y se le cobraría una multa de hasta mil dólares. Do you understand? ¿Usted entiende esto? I understand. Any contact whatsoever, Miss Brothers, the first thing you do is call 911. Once y'all place your email on the chat, I'll go ahead and leave the meeting. Y'all stay healthy and safe. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too, Your Honor. Llamaría al 911 en cualquier momento. Sí. <coughs> May the interpreter. You should get paid double. Yes, you could be no. excused. Well, there you have it. I know there's a lot more. 
That was just the chunk I did. That took a long time because there, whatever. There, that was a few hours worth that I edited a bunch of stuff out on. I know that there's more good stuff. I plan on doing it, but that's that's as much as I could do today. That last hearing was not funny, although it was very interesting, and I saw lot, lots of people asking things. Oh well, no, no, no. The last hearing was hilarious uh, with respect to the interpreter issue. It was fantastic. But then we get to the, the basis of the allegations, obviously. Uh, it was kind of a somber thing. But actually, I think overall, the, 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 the guy defending him, I think, did a very good job overall. But he chased a couple of bad arguments. And, and I think the other attorney also did a very good job and said a couple of things I don't quite agree with. But not, nothing outrageous. I think overall, the, the good, competent representation um, I, a lot of people were asking this stuff in here. First of all, he completed the Fifth Amendment as a foreign national. The, 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 most of the Constitution applies to people who aren't citizens. Let's just let's just say that. I mean, you, you could, I, I could do a six hour lecture on it. I, it. It gets more complicated than that. But effectively, mostly the Constitution applies to everybody. OK, that, that's the generalization I'll make to, to make it simple. Uh, the other thing is uh, everyone was asking me, well, I'll put them in jail and all this stuff. This is a uh, temporary protection order. It's a civil action. And the, the judge uh, lined up that if a violation of that can be a criminal violation. But this is a civil action. And that, that has some uh, repercussions. One, one being the, the uh, standard of proof, proof is going to be a preponderance. Then we get into the interesting issue of, of the Fifth Amendment. Ever, everyone's asking, well, why is he pleading the Fifth? Um, or, or, you know, why isn't he charged with a crime? Well, he either is charged with a crime or potentially could be charged with a crime and anticipates that. And that's why he's pleading the Fifth. That's, that's why he can plead the Fifth. He, doesn't, he wants the right to not incriminate himself in a criminal matter. So that's the whole basis for it. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how law nerd you guys want to get with this stuff. That's why I waited till the end. It, it's the, even on a very surface level, like I'm doing here, it's it's too much to try to get into during during the hearing itself. Um, I think I, as usual, it's just whatever we we think a lot alike. So not always on on every issue. There there are times I absolutely disagree with uh, Judge Manning on a little point here there. But but on the bit on the larger issues, I, I always know where she's coming from. Um, and I would have done the same thing here. She puts it in place for twelve months, so she grant, grants the TPO. the The defense attorney makes a very good argument, saying, "Look, there really isn't a lot of testimony." I, I would make the same argument, and to the extent we have a police report, he he brings out that she says, she reports that he wasn't violent, and that's the whole basis for the TPO. It's a very good legal argument. Having said that, I think she has more than sufficient basis. The the um, petitioner in the TPO does testify that she doesn't feel safe, and that and that uh, that he did these things, but on a very surface level. That that mixed with him him pleading the fifth on every allegation and her being able to take a negative inference based upon that pleading of the fifth in a civil action. Um, I think, I think the two, the two of those things, it makes it clear, propon clear proponents of the evidence without a problem. So she just puts it in place for 12 months. That's not his real problem. His real problem is avoiding getting charged or convicted on, on criminal offenses, staying away from her. That's, that's just got to happen now. That's just going to happen. But but the attorney gave it a valiant effort and, and tried to uh, say, hey, they didn't prove it. I would make a similar argument. I don't. I I, I would also make the same ruling the judge did. <laughs> that's that's what it's like to practice law. But but I think the attorney made the the a good argument for for the facts he was given. And I think the other attorney did an excellent job in presenting that case. I would have been a little more fact driven. She she got a little. So th these are style points, but she 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 knows he's going to plead the fifth to everything. But I, I she's asking like sort of compound questions. I would have kept it much simpler. And then she she's throwing sort of um, characterizations and sort of emotional crap in there that that wasn't necessary. Not all of it, but she did some of that that I think should have just been cleaned up. You just want to nail the elements of the case. 
what do you have what do you have to show what showing do you need to make um for a TPO in the state of Georgia say things that that make the that prove those elements without characterization without editorialization without compound questions and haven't played the fifth to it then she can take the negative inference and she can take your your testimony your, your client's testimony i believe the client the, i mean the client the, i believe the petitioner the girl in this case um th- this guy probably was yeah, you know, creepy and did th- did things he he didn't want to. Uh, you know, we could have a deeper discussion about at what level she decided that, and that, that's just uncomfortable. Nobody needs to go there. Um, the, the, and those types of uh, discussions, ugly as they are, might need to occur in a criminal trial, but certainly not on a TPO. Just grant the damn thing, which is which is what the judge did. I mean, the, the whole thing. I mean, she's got she's got a. <laughs> She's got a lit- litigant named Amazing today. She's got the, 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 this guy, this creepy dude with the little accent who 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 dismisses the interpreter and then wants it ten seconds later, and then and then and then uh, and then answers all the questions in English before they're interpreted to him. Oh, good lord! The, the people before that with the. Uh, <laughs> That was another one. I was right in line with her thinking when she she wanted a GAL. She's right. The, the, that attorney was also going to file a modification. The judge is like, you're going to need a GAL for the modification anyway. But she had serious reservations, as did I, that that woman wasn't making stuff up uh, to uh, to uh, just to cause an advantage for her in the modification of the custody agreement. There's all sorts of incentive to make up the exact allegations she did. I'm not saying she did. I'm not saying she, but she has every incentive to say exactly what she did in order to gain the upper hand in the custody battle. And that's why the judge was leery of it. Not calling her a liar, but just saying, nah, I want an independent party, namely a GAL in there on the ground looking at it. I'm worried about this kid. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, settle this kid with an abusive father if that's the case and i also don't want to, ab- to settle this kid exclusively with an abusive mother uh who's lying and i and i and she probably has her thoughts but it wasn't clear and it certainly wasn't clear to me from this short hearing today so appointing a gal made all sorts of sense i mean there was there was more crazy in there there <laughs> I liked it when she just lost her mind. It just it just lays out on her on her chair. <laughs> it says, "This is a joke. What, what am I supposed to do here? We just we just dismissed the interpreter." Oh God! And then right then right in the wake of that, the the attorney really wanted to to not have his client testify, and I see why. I see why. But he had a bad argument that, that his client didn't have to testify. You might say it once and see if it flies, but once it gets smacked down, let it go. Okay, the judge ruled on it. I I heard. I heard. I have the whole thing, thanks to Mikhail. Everybody told me about this call, but I was literally, um, well, I was uh, earlier in the day, I was being drug around Michigan Avenue by a certain somebody. But later in the day, I was, uh, <laughs> I was, oh, I, I was uh, dealing with a with with the Paltrow trial and and her, and Gwyneth Paltrow's testimony, which I didn't really find believable. I'm not overwhelmed by by either side in that case. I, I have no idea what a jury's going to do with that from what I've seen so far, and I've seen most of it. I don't know. We'll find out. The plaintiff is testifying tomorrow, but I don't think he's going to remember anything. That's that's his whole shtick is that he's got uh, frontal lobe brain injury and he and and he lost consciousness and he doesn't know. It. You know, I don't know. I thought his experts were good. I thought his friend was decent. I thought Gwyneth Paltrow was bad, but not horrible. Just bad. I've seen where I mean, not, not nearly as bad as Amber Heard. But that's, I mean, that's the standard. 
<laughs> That's the standard few could meet. <laughs> all right, there we go. I did all my meandering at the end here because it, it 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 was a little it was a little too intricate. It was a little too intricate. So thank you all for coming out. I do plan on starting the morning. I'm I'm going to do at least the testimony of the plaintiff in the Gwyneth Paltrow case tomorrow. I can't remember his name right now. I can't remember. But uh, he is he is set to start first thing in the morning. I know because Chief Spread Eagle is whining and complaining about we're, we're, we're going to have to start a case an hour later and change six flights. Oh, stop it. No, you aren't. No, you aren't. That's how we ended Friday. That's how, how we ended Friday. Oh, but it all worked out. All right. Thank you all for coming out. I'll see you soon.